Okay, hello everybody. Today I would like to explain the concept of variance. Okay, so okay, so as we all know by now, human genome is comprised of twenty-three pair of chromosome, and these twenty-three pair of chromosomes are coded by three point three billion base pairs, and these three point three billion base pairs are composed of A, T, C, and G. and these all base pairs of 3.3 billion are represented in a something called reference genome which i'll be explaining today followed by i'll be explaining if there is any variation in the reference genome how does that happen what are the different type of variations and how that can cause disease like some examples of it so in order to map and sequence the whole 3.3 billion base pair of human genome it started in 1990 under a project called human genome project which was finished in 2003 okay so in aim and objective of human genome projects were to sequence the whole genome of 3 billion base pair create a physical map of human genome which means which gene is at which chromosome and what is the map of the human genome to identify all the disease causing genes to understand the function of the gene to make available the information for the researchers and to develop tools for processing and analyzing the data okay so this all this is the and uh, here like a historical advertisement of the of calling volunteers for human genome project which was published in 1997 in buffalo newspaper which in which it was written that the goal is to decode the human hereditary information or also known as human blueprint that determines all individual traits inherited from the parent and the outcome of the project will have a tremendous impact on future progress of medical science which we all agree and lead to improved diagnosis and treatment of hereditary diseases so the volunteers will provide one time donation of small blood specimen and they will the blood will be taken out from these random volunteers and which which ultimately will be sequenced because they wanted to keep the anonymity of the people whose reference genome was you know the sequence was included this was put uh, in march 23 1997 and uh, in 1990s the majority of the buffalo population was mainly european by origin so in this whole 13 year journey 20 institutes were part of it from six different countries from china france germany japan uk and usa and that time in 1990 the sequencing technology could sequence only few hundred base pairs so imagine like few hundred base pair to billions of base pair how tremendous task it is to imagine even at that time so how would they would do is the general template is if there is the original genome they would break the dna into like multiple small fragments clone it sequence it into smaller fragments line up these sequences to find the overlaps by the computer and see here if this is the overlap then this is a sequence of confidence and i would say and they would call it quantic of course there are no overlapping sequences found and there will be gap in the reference genome so the output of human genome project is it took around 13 years from start to finish first draft genome released in june 2000 finished sequence in april 2003 published in 2004 for researchers and uh, it was put in i think public repository in that time as well the human reference genome largely completed in 2001 now it has become like the operating manual of homo sapiens because that is like the map of the human genome like which gene is where what is the information what are the disease causing genes and it has become like the book of life so what is the timeline In 1953 the double helix model of DNA is proposed by Watson and Crick. In 1990 human genome project is launched. E coli genome was fully sequenced in 1997. In 1999 chromosome 22 was fully sequenced and 2003 human genome project was complete. So what are the few shortcomings of human reference genome by now? 
it although it is a mashup of sequences of these everyday people we all know we all possess some or the other disease so obviously this is not like a entire healthy genome second point the majority of buffalo population at that time was european okay including german irish polish and others so it does not represent the entire world population based on ethnicity there was a study done in which few of the ethnic populations for example han chinese tuscans european puerto ricans peruvians they were compared with the reference genome and they were found that 60 million variations are still missing in the reference genome and next the major it is 90% sequence and there are few gaps in the reference genome still and if for example if you want to get the meaning of any word and the pages of the dictionary are not there you cannot get the meaning of the word in a similar way if there are gaps in the reference genome we do not know what happens there and if there is any disease gene or something we want to know like is it from that region we cannot get and then we have just no information so this is an example of where the multiple ethnicity variations were compared y axis represents the variant sites per genome in million and then these represents the ethnicity european asian south american african you can see the number of variation differences in african versus like european so the role of ethnicity is as important as to study in a reference genome so multiple countries have started their own genome initiative so that they can create their own ethnic specific population or very uh, like include po like population specific genomes so that the information about the population wise diversity can also be included so these are few of the examples now india genome asia uh, and indigenome all this such a part of uh, initiatives from india as well if you see here over the years from 2008 to 2015 the gencode version so what is gencode gencode is a repository where the information of genes transcript reference genomes everything is updated time to time and you can see over the years the number has gone so much and it is still going up every year and the updates keep coming up because the new information keeps on adding in the reference genome so it's still not the perfect version of the reference genome okay so now i would say you know what is snv snv is any single nucleotide variation what are single nucleotide polymorphism a single nucleotide polymorphism is a variation in a nucleotide sequence that occurs at a specific position in the genome occurs at a very high frequency about 1 in 1000 bases to 1 in 100 to 300 bases it occurs in protein coding as well as non coding region of the gene like snv a single nucleotide polymorphism is also a single base substitution but it is limited to germline dna and must be present in at least 1% of the population to be called as snp moving ahead there are the few facts in human approximately 19.9 99.9 bases are same remaining 0.1% makes us unique which contributes to the attributes the traits that we are the characteristics and the diseases so you can see the amount of variation this 0.1% hold is huge and the variation can be harmless harmful for example causing diabetes cancer heart disease or latent for example any allergic syndromes or something where they are susceptible for certain conditions now what is the difference between mutation and variation because sometimes people use these terms interchangeably interchangeably so mutation is a permanent alteration in the nucleic nucleotide sequence of a gene or a part of the chromosome variation whereas is a difference between individual or group of individual of a particular species mutations can affect a single individual a variation can be seen in groups mutation occurs due to the error in dna replication exposure to uv or chemicals 
variation occurs due to mutation which is one of the reason then other reasons are genetic recombination gene flow genetic drift random mating geographical barrier over the time evolution you know these kind of reasons there are two type of uh, mutations now hereditary and acquired two type of variations are genetic and environmental the cause uh, of mutation is an alteration in the genotype of the individual a cause of variation is a mutation so now you know what is the difference between mutation and variation so there are a lot of different type of mutations for example deletion silent mutation insertion substitution stop gain stop loss so these all are very crucial for the genome but i'll be explaining few of these you know just by giving the example so that it becomes clear how these rep how these happens in you know genome so first is synonymous variation a snp in which snp in which both forms lead to the same protein sequence both forms means the original form the normal form and the mutative form so here we can see the normal one code for lysine and protein coding also code for lysine so ultimately we would not have an effect on the protein part of the genome you know protein part of the sequence so ultimately it will not affect the functioning usually these definitions are you know based on the fact that uh, the dna code for mrna and mrna code for protein and protein are the functional moieties that ultimately regulate the function in the cell but now there are a lot of different type of uh, non coding rnas are also known which not code for proteins but are playing key role in the regulation of the function but here these definitions are mainly if there is a change in a protein then like a synonymous variation or a silent variation if there is a change uh, like not in the protein then silent if there is a change in the protein sequence then uh, i'll explaining for further what they are called so non synonymous variations are in which both forms lead to a different protein for example here you see uh they can be of two type missense or nonsense nonsense results in the premature stop codon so you see here lysine with aag if a is converted to t it becomes a stop codon so it will create a premature protein whereas what is a missense mutation it results in a different amino acid for example aag becomes agg leading to lysine to arginine or lysine to threonine so these are the example of missense mutation okay what is the effect of snp it can alter the function of protein by altering the amino acid sequence or alter the function of regulatory sequence okay so these change can happen at the dna level chromosome level or genome level so i have explained the example of a dna level mutation now i'll be little bit explaining more for example here if you see you have this whole frames of you know codons in the dna if you see here okay so this ctt and ctc is coding for glutamine glutamine if you see here if this c is replaced by t it is called lysine it becomes lysine so the amino acid I, itself has changed you know this is called substitution because this c is substituted to p next example is if this another c is inserted here with c c t so c t t c t c becomes c c t t c t so it has been inserted and it has shifted the frames but because it is like one new nucleotide sequence inserted it is called insertion if there is this c is deleted so c t t becomes t t and no other c okay so sorry this a is deleted oh, sorry i this a is deleted because of that this is moved this side so t g c t t and which has changed the sequence of the entire amino acid thing but because this nucleotide is deleted it is called deletion now what happens at the chromosome level 
if a b c d e f is one example of say representative chromosome and if this for example if b region or segment is duplicated it is called duplication if this b is deleted from the chromatid it is called deletion now you see here a b c if this a c b is inverted you know b c to c b it is called inversion now at the chromosome level you can see if what is translocation in which now two chromosomes are involved so a segment of chromosome is switched with the other chromosome segment so a b c d e f in caps i have represented one chromatid and then b c d e f g i have represented in the small caps for the other chromatid and now you can see after translocation this has become capital e f has moved here and small e f g has moved here <coughs> yeah so this is called translocation so this can happen the genome level also variations can happen for example this is the normal 2n genome and then you can see if trisomy happens where one chromosome itself is like become like a set of two becomes a set of three and this is called trisomy one example is down syndrome i'll be explaining this in my further slides then edward syndrome tau syndrome you can search about these syndromes you know you can google about it there are many examples of these mutations variations exist in a, in case of human diseases second is monosomy in which 2n in that one chromosome is itself like not there like 2n minus 1 this is called monosomy then if the whole set of chromosome is duplicated or you know somehow become more number wise like if there is uh, supposed to be four chromosomes two sets like two sets four chromosome it is become three sets and six chromosome this is called polyploidy so polyploidy frequently arises during tissue development and repair in age associated diseases such as cancer so aneuploidy versus polyploidy a condition in which an organism contain an abnormal number of total chromosome in the genome so abnormal number of total chromosomes in polyploidy we talk about abnormal number of chromosome sets so aneuploidy is common in humans polyploidy is rare okay it generally happens in cancer cells you know aneuploidy is rare in plants whereas polyploidy is very common in plants so you see how plants and human are so different with each other so different type of aneuploidy includes monosomy which is 2n minus 1 disomy which is n plus 1 so 2n minus 1 which means in one of the set one chromosome is not there disomy means in a haploid there is one more chromosome nullisomy means 2n minus 2 which means two chromosome are removed triploidy means entire set of haploid is added so it become 2n to 3n tetraploidy become 4n pentaploidy means five copies now the new or the bigger variations you know which are greater than 50 base pair arrangements they can be deletion insertions inversions translocation but they don't happen at one base pair they happen at a large stretch like more than 50 base pair so this is uh, so they are called structural variation okay so a copy number variation is a duplication or a deletion that change the number of copies of a particular segment you know for example a stretch of a segment of the dna which is just copied 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 in the chromosome or it is has to be in copies and just deleted so you know like if supposed to be a repeat stretch so in genome there are few repeat stretches of the segments uh, sequences and if that number of stretches reduce which is called deletion and if the number of stretches get duplicated become more then this is called duplication so and any so structural variations are like more than 50 base pair another category they are less than 50 base pair but more than one base pair so they are called indel they are called short insertions or deletions so a short 
segment can be inserted in the DNA or can be deleted from the DNA. So you can see here if this is the uh, uh, sequence and then if the you can see here if A is inserted okay then A C A T okay now it has become like just A is inserted and the whole thing is shifted and it has become like through an in serine in serine in a frame shift variation happened okay so if we match the sequence to cat 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 for cat it has become cat cat and a cat cat and you know like that so because of that the frame shift variation happened the structure variations one example is inversion in which uh, suppose this is the segment it has become inverted so the orange came here and the blue came here so this segment is inverted second is deletion so if this orange segment of the chromosome itself is deleted from the chromosome a translocation as i already gave you the example if this segment of one chromatid is get into the other chromatid like an exchange sort of thing then this is called translocation a duplication is when a segment is duplicated okay like a just this chunk become like a double within that position insertion is when a new chunk is inserted into the genome so overall summary there are multiple example of mutations and very difficult to explain all of them so i'll give you a few of the examples summarizing them so point mutation is a single base pair change in the dna that can be missense missense means they can cause for another protein coding amino acid like they can change the amino acid sequence nonsense or silent okay so how it happens missense mutation is as i already told cause a change in the amino acid because of which the protein function is altered okay if you see here the lysine has become like a glutamine and then it becomes leucine glycine and nonsense mutation creates a stop codon okay so if the like, lysine has become a stop codon silent mutation is when the sequence remains same and because of that there is no overall effect on the protein coding sequence a deletion is the dna base pairs are missing which is deleted or added which is insertion and the size of deletion and insertion vary from a single base pair to more than a single base pair they can be like a few thousand base pairs as well frame shift mutations for example we know how to read the frames right 3 3 codon in that so it it's possible that the because of one insertion or deletion the whole frame of amino acid has been shifted for example till here you see the amino acid sequence was fine and then because of and here you can see the amino acid sequence is changed creating a stop codon changing in amino acid sequence these are the examples a splice site mutation is usually when so see we represent exonic sequences in caps and intronic sequences in like a small caps of the sequence so you can see here if there is a splice site misdetection for example tg convert to ta then somehow the transcription machinery will not identify the splice site leading to like a protein premature termination stop codon like that you know these are the examples of splice site mutations so now i'll be giving you examples a few of the diseases in which these mutations happen like because of these those disease happen and how it has an effect okay so first is substitution mutation okay so substitution mutation famous example is sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia you see the sequence ctc glutamic acid converts to cac because of that it becomes valine okay and these red blood cells which are round become sickle cell because of just this and you see the turning round flexible disc into stiff and sticky sickle cell that blocks the blood flow you see how severe one mutation has an effect okay so this is one example of substitution mutation second example of insertion mutation is fragile x syndrome so fragile x syndrome is a autism spectrum disorder 
in which intellectual disability is one of the symptom there are other side features are abnormal facial features prominent forehead large ears long face prominent jaw so the incidence of this happening is in 1 in 4000 males and 1 in 8000 females so if this is the normal x chromosome how fragile x syndrome so these are the repeat stretch of c g g in fmri okay so usually in normal people the number of repeats are in the less than 45 count but for some people it can become more than 200 okay so this is how the spectrum goes if the repeats are between 45 to 54 it is called intermediate if the repeat sequences has gone from 55 to 200 this is called pre pre uh, mutation and then if these repeat stretch has somehow inserted to like 200 and more it has become like a full mutation okay and then um, third example is turner syndrome which is a monosomy this syndrome in which occurs when a baby is born with only one x chromosome rather than two x or x and y so baby is born with only one x chromosome because of that you see the effect they have usually sh short stature wobbling of the neck and you know and the uh, there is low uh, posterior hairline there is a lymphedema at the, from birth so these are the few of the basic phenotypic things which happens in the turner syndrome and they have infer they might have infertility and there are multiple different variations depend on patient to patient then one of the example you might have heard is down syndrome so the babies with down syndrome have an extra copy of chromosome 21 okay and intellectual disability and short and long term memory loss is one of the major effects of down syndrome other of the phenotypic things are redundant skin you can see the open mouth protruding tongue branchiocephaly small ears you know these are few of the phenotypic things to identify if they have a down syndrome but usually we uh, see the you know karyotyping and we can see that you know and there is an extra copy of chromosome 21 next example is cat's cry syndrome in which the high pitched cry of a baby sounds like a cat okay this is just the identification thing but usually they have intellectual disability delayed development small head size low birth weight weak muscles you know few are born with heart defects also and these are very crucial things which defines the quality of life of the patient and it makes it very difficult for them to you know actually deal with all these symptoms so as i've told you a lot of uh, you know few examples and few of the mutation this is a lot to grab in in one presentation so i would like you to like read about these different kind of mutations and you know in general what are the common with every specific example what are the diseases few of them you might have heard in your daily life you know with people or with suffering from it and you know you might not know about those mutations because some they are rare so you might have come across them so i would like you to read more about it so that you can get a lot more information about how these mutations happen And, and you know what are the things that researchers are doing in order to cope up with this to identify these mutation to diagnose this you know and uh, and you know how to just get away with these symptoms you know it's very difficult and so many research projects are still going on to understand these disorders so um, i guess this is for today and thank you so much and uh, if you have any questions just just let us know thank you